Hello and welcome to this video. So now we can open a trade and set a take profit and stop loss. I want now to close the trade. So it's a different endpoint from the order endpoint. We have to use something called the trade endpoint, which I've got open here. And you can see here that we can get some information. We can get list of trades, list of open trades. We can also get a specific trade in the details. And importantly, we can make a put request. So that's something new, I think, which basically means modifying. And we have to send in to the account ID slash trade slash the trade ID forward slash close should close an open trade. Importantly, and I'll make this last mention and never mention it again, but I'm always telling you to make sure you deal with errors. It tells us here the different kinds of responses. So if we get a 400, we knew it couldn't be closed. A 404 means it couldn't find the trade and a 200 means the request was successful. Again, build something into your code that uh, when you're running with real uh, money particularly, deals with these particular specific status codes here so you know what's going on. So back into our code, we need to write yet another function. So we're going to call this one on close trade. And this, I'm just going to copy some code from below so we can change things. So we have the accounts forward slash ID. Instead of the orders, we now need trades. And then we also need the trade ID on the end here as well so that we actually know what we're doing. And then finally, we need to put that close in there as well. We don't actually need to send any data or anything in with this. Again, from below, I'm just going to copy the uh, URL request we have here. We know that a 200 is the OK, not the 201. We don't have any data that we're sending in. But importantly, we no longer have a post. We have a put request in here now to be able to make our request. Once we've done that, then we can say that if the status code is not 200, return false, otherwise return true. So that's all we need to do to close a trade. So we'll go into runner.py and we can set ourselves up, I think, with a new command in here. We'll put AC for close. Now we'll make a few rough assumptions here that we're only going to try and close when we actually have a, a trade to close. So we'll say print and then API.close trade and we'll send in the trade ID. And that should be all we need to do to close. What we could also do maybe is just uh, print this here so we can type uh, closing and we can at least verify what we have. So one thing I'm going to do inside here is just take off the stop loss and take profit for now because we don't really need them. We've seen how they work. What we should be able to do is place a trade with T and then close the trade with C. So let's have a look. And now after a quick edit, I've realized I've made a little bit of an error there because of course we're returning a tuple from the uh, place trade. We're no longer just returning the trade ID. If I just go back to the place trade, uh, where are we? Where are we? Can't find it. Here it is, of course, we're returning the trade ID and the OK or not. So inside runner here, I need to do trade ID and comma OK is equal to this. And now this will have the actual trade that we want to close. Otherwise, we're trading, uh, closing <laughs> a tuple, which won't work. So running this in the console, I press T to make a trade. I flick to Oanda and I can see that the trade has now come on the board. ID 216. Then back here, let's press uh, capital C then and try and close it. Now I've got a true, which is uh, more promising than it was. Back in Oanda, you can see that the trade has disappeared. It's being closed. So we're able to open and close trades, which is a major part of the trading bot. Now we can move on to actually setting up something that can do this for us. So thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one.